There are many examples of horizontal circular motion, and a prominent example is the conical pendulum. A conical pendulum is an example of horizontal circular motion, and here's the basic diagram that represents the model of a conical pendulum showing the forces acting on the object. And remember, a conical pendulum acts on the same principle as any other horizontally circular motion situations where the resultant force acting on the object will provide the centripetal force. And in this case of the horizontal circular motion of the conical pendulum, the resultant force acting on the object is the resultant of the tension and the weight. And in order to solve problems related to the conical pendulum, we must resolve the forces vertically and horizontally. And on a side note, the reason why this situation, this model is called the conical pendulum, is because the volume of revolution in which this pendulum creates as it moves through the circle is a cone. All right. So let's look at resolving the forces vertically. So in order to do this, we have to resolve the vertical components of each of the forces acting on the object. And these forces include the tension and the weight. So let's first look at the vertical component of the tension. And according to our basic rules of trigonometry, this is equal to T sine theta. And the vertical component of the weight is equal to mass times acceleration of free fall, or mg. And since we know that in horizontal circular motion, there is no vertical displacement, and hence the net resultant force in the, in the vertical direction is zero, or the vertical component of the resultant force is equal to zero, if you like. And therefore, the vertical component of tension has to be equal to the vertical component of the weight. All right, so let's look at a simple question that relates tension to the circular motion and we are asked to calculate T from the data that we've been given. So firstly we need to find the vertical component of tension that is T sine theta newtons and the vertical component of weight that is mass times G that is equal to 5G in this case right and T sine theta in this case is equal to T sine 35 and that is equal to 5G and we can further simplify to give us an, am an answer of T, that is 85.42 newtons. So the more important, a more important step in our calculations involving conical pendulums is being able to resolve horizontally. So similarly to when we were resolving it vertically, we are going to resolve the horizontal components of each of the forces acting on the conical pen on the object that's moving in the circular motion. And so we have to find the horizontal component of the tension, and that is equal to T cos theta. And the horizontal component of the weight is equal to zero. As you can see, there's no component acting to the right or left of the weight. And therefore, the horizontal component of the resultant force is the horizontal component of tension. There's no other forces acting left or right from the weight. All right. So when we are considering the horizontal component of the resultant force, we are considering the centripetal force. Since the vertical component of the resultant force is equal to zero, the horizontal component of the resultant force is going to provide us the centripetal force, all right? And we know that the resultant horizontal component is equal to T cos theta, and since that is the centripetal force, it is equal to mv squared over r. So we can equate those two to give us an equation that gives us a ratio of how these variables, mass, linear speed, and radius, can be related to tension and the angle in a conical pendulum, all right? And a common question that we will be asked is to find the velocity, the linear velocity of the motion, okay? And we know that T cos theta is equal to mv squared over r. In fact, we can derive that. We don't even need that equation. So the first thing we need to know is T, all right? So by resolving vertically, 
we know that t sine theta is equal to 5g. All right, and we can further simplify the equation to give us 10g is equal to t. And since we know that the horizontal component of the resultant force provides the centripetal force, it is equal to mv squared over r, and therefore rh, I mean rh, by looking at the trigonometrical diagram, we are going to give it equal to 10 cos 30. And according to the equation above, t cos 30 is equal to mv squared over r. We can further simplify to find v. And when we do that, we give an answer of v is equal to 4.12 meters per second. All right? I'm going to introduce the double string pendulum, and it basically works on the same principle as the single string pendulum. So what we have to do is we have to calculate the variables and resolve vertically and horizontally, exactly the same as before. So if we were to do the similar question to find V, so similarly, we would need to find tension. We need to find the resultant force acting horizontally, and we need to find tension in order to do this. So in order to find T1, we know that the resultant component vertically is zero, right? So we know that the tension times by sine 60 trigonometry minus 5 sine 30 will give us a force that's going to counteract with the weight, that is 5g. Therefore, we can further simplify to give us T1 of 67 multiplied by root 3 newtons. And relating to centripetal force, since RH is the resultant force and it provides the centripetal force, RH is equal to mv squared over r. And looking at this diagram, we're considering T1. RH, the resultant component horizontally, is equal to 5 cos theta multiplied by T1 cos 60. And that is equal to 5 cos theta plus uh, the previous answer of T1, that is 67 root 3, multiplied by cos 60, and that is equal to mv squared of r. We can further simplify by plugging in components of r is equal to 1 and mass is equal to 5. We can further simplify to find v squared, and hence v is going to give us 3.53 meters per second. All right? So, I'm going to, and that is it. I'm going to give you a quick summary of the basic principles when dealing with conical pendulums. So the first of those are that the vertical component of the resultant force is equal to zero. There's, there's no vertical displacement, as I've said, and the horizontal component of the resultant force is equal to T cos theta. All right. So looking at these two equations, we know that the resultant force acting on the object when it's moving in this conical pendulum in circular motion is equal to T cos theta. That's the only result. That's the resultant force acting on it. And we can further equate two other equations that gives us when we're resolving vertically, we get T sine theta is equal to mg, and T cos theta is equal to the centripetal force that's needed to keep it in circular motion. All right. And the last thing is that when you're dealing with double string pendulums, they work on the same principle as single string pendulums. All you need to do is resolve vertically. All you need to do is resolve horizontally. That's all. Thank you for watching my video. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and watch the next part of the circular motion series. Thank you very much.